Hey y'all, I'm gonna be reacting to Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 41, and I'll be starting my reaction in 1, 0, go! Alright, I'm pumped up for this. Hell yeah, they should be getting more popular. Hey, at least now we're seeing Mimi's personal stance on this. And we're finally... <laughs> and look how she's complimenting with the evil laugh. That seems like something Yuga would make. Oh! So my guess it might be some kind of compromise between rush duels and regular duels? That's my guess. No, but all jokes aside though, I actually do like how this, that specific scene in the episode, it's at least showing you Mimi's growth because the first few episodes of the series did kind of emphasize that when it came to Rush duels, Mimi was sort of like a hard ass, had a hard line stance against them. I like how this episode is showing you that she's changed, but she's changed for the better because now we're at least seeing that when it comes to her, she's at the very least now starting to straight up somewhat, at least per personally, accept Rush Duels, even though they may not be necessarily what she wants. And that's what I dig about this episode. So we're seeing at least some character change with her. And I always appreciate that whenever the series decides to make the characters just a bit more dynamic, always, almost always puts a smile on my face. Na 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 Rush. Go rush, 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 no, rush, do. I always love that, Dane. Wanna, yeah. See, hey, you know what? I actually don't mind these rounds of episodes, seeing her just grandiose delusions. Whoa! <laughs> Finally. I mean, hey, that would at the very least give Yuga a huge advantage if you can use maximum summons. But maybe they might accept some portions of it. <laughs> oh, down. <laughs> I just love how I did that without even paying attention to it. I mean, I'm pretty fucking curious about this, too. I like how Kotoko always has to fucking keep his priorities straight and has to do it right after the bell rings instead of that pressing conversation. Maybe she wants her own individuality. Oh. Still Luke, though. <laughs> this dude. I love how Kaiser's always switching his loyalties. That dude can't be loyal to anything. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love how Kaiser's also evilly laughing too. What a proud bastard! <laughs> Okay, they need to be fucking stopped. That actually seems like that's extremely bad for Luke to be gaining more power.
They can still be friends, though. I mean, it is the Yu-Gi-Oh way. You do have to accomplish everything through duels. Now nah, she's thinking he's falling for him. <laughs> she's thinking it's gonna be some kind of like date. <laughs> Maybe she's moving to another school and that's why she wants to quit. That's my guess. Hmm. I kind of hope she does win, though. Oh. Yo, this is going to be pretty fun. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Ronze actually switches up her deck a bit to try to get the upper hand. I like how he calls his own sister crazy. <laughs> Ringing endorsement for her character there. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. It's all absolutely fabulous when she's about to summon one of her trump cards. And the dramatic sound too when she does it sounds like semi-robotic when it's like Ditch! all the type of sound you'd hear when an enemy in Dragon Ball does a footstep. <laughs> so cute how you go roaming and her bra are actually going along with it too. Someone needs to stop this dude. I like how the kids look absolutely annoyed. They don't want to deal with this bullshit. They all look pissed, the kids. I'm gonna blame them, though. Wouldn't that just affect the circuiting, though? <laughs> Well, yeah, this skip is only going to make Luke to look out like a bigger dumbass than he already looked like. And he was already looking like the, one of the hugest dumbasses in the series. Hmm. Oh, well, that's actually a pretty dang good effect. <laughs> oh shit. And at that point, Ronza realized she fucked up. <laughs> oh, that's cute. But I'm assuming she's got a counter attack against Yame Ruler, though. Even if her monster gets destroyed, I'm assuming she's probably gonna have some. Yeah. She would have been talking shit if she didn't have a trap card or a quick spell card to face them down that can 
make up the difference. Well, probably because she um, was going to make this duel ahead of time. That's how she's getting the upper hand right now. <laughs> I like how this time, though, you to make the Yuga and Roman and the other actually... Oh, still with the bow thing. The bowing though. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Okay, it's actually not such a bad effect. Oh boy, that's gonna be a lot of damage there. I just love that evil laugh. <laughs> okay, now he looks like he wants a puncher. <laughs> oh, man. I just love all these dramatic looking backgrounds for all of, from a good amount of runs, these monsters. As if she were at to activate a field spell. Yeah, that's not the case. Mmm. Yeah, I mean, my guess is Cocktail probably has a trap. Chaka to avoid himself from losing if our girl gets the upper hand. That's pretty much a direct attack if that thing gets destroyed. Okay, now that's just bro okay, I mean that's a potentially really dang good combo there. I just wonder why she's going this far, though. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I'm always so really dramatic about everything. Psh. I don't... Okay, now she... Okay, she's been watching way too many movies. Now she's forgetting the difference between morality and fiction. <laughs> I do love the Armageddon movie reference, though. And the Armageddon was made by Michael Bell. I like how they still have retro movie references. Okay, maybe she might be a therapist. Whoa. I love how Ron said she does everything all always over dramatically. Jeez, what does he have? Electronic um, shocker devices on his body? Whenever he duels?
Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck is that CUNO baby comment? Huh. And you know what? It's better than having absolutely nothing. And I'm pretty sure eventually she's gonna ask Romine and Yuga and the boy to battle. Yep! We all knew it was coming. I think he's been a bit too rough on himself, though. I just love the overly dramatic music. <laughs> now that he's only got 500 life points and Ronzi has 4,700. Because this is making it sound a little bit epic now. Well, no matter who wins, I actually wouldn't mind the end result because if Ronze wins, it shows you how much of a long way she's come as a duelist. But if Kokto wins, then it could actually build Ronze's self confidence again. Although, money is on Kotoku winning, concerning he's only got 500 life points left. Psh! It's like all being absolutely blue balled there. I just love that he has to have this chant right before someone in a monster. <laughs> hey, the CGI for that doesn't look that bad. Oh boy. Oh. Talk about being placed in the corner there. And that explains why he had so many monsters with zero attack points. That actually puts it in perspective now. Yeah, Ronzi definitely needs to take a chill pill there, and I mean that in a good way. And then just sounds like, and she sounds as if Gunks are actually nacho dipped inside of her body with the way she's making sounds. How would that help her out in taking the direct attack? <laughs> I mean, I guess Kotsu needed more wins in his resume, though. I mean, I wouldn't mind if she becomes a bit more independently minded at the very least. I mean, 
actually like this about Goku at the very least. Shows you that he's not going to force someone to stick by him against their free will. I mean, hey, not much he could have done, though. I mean, he won the duel. Yo, what a cocky son of a bitch! <laughs> what was the purpose of this, though? I, I'm actually surprised that the teachers are actually talking against it. Oh. Oh, about fucking time. You got someone to slap some sense into him. Okay. <laughs> Been a while since I shown her off. She's always changing names. Wait, cause I just died. Jeez. It's actually surprising to see they're actually accepting it. And I also you wonder who was the one that actually made the proposal though. Neil? No, it can't be him. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, I'm cool with this though. It looks like the writers are actually going to use use her for something important instead of just having her in the background straight up. I actually approve of this. King Gong Dong Dong Goonies are total One, two, three, four, five, check Yo, just something about this theme song always puts a smile to my face. Fucking love this song. Now. No, 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 no. Okay, but no, seriously, I gotta rate this episode straight up, though. Even though I do love the theme song a lot. I gotta admit, I like this episode more than I thought I was. So I'm gonna give this one an 8 out of 10 because... It was absolutely funny. It's just a shame though that it got my hopes up and me thinking that Ronze was gonna actually stand independent, but then afterwards she's still gonna serve Neil. I'm like, hmm, damn. Okay, guess the um, opening, I mean, the ED is over now. So that's it. That was the only slight thing disappointing, but who knows? I'm not gonna. Throw shit on the series too much because it could set up Ronze for a lot of stuff in that happening. Oh, okay, so it seems like there's going to be no episode for next week then. Go on by what they're saying. Damn, I guess that means there's no episode next week potentially. Just wonder who Luke's gonna be dueling against this week. I mean, I guess going by that, it's gonna be a completely new character then. And they're gonna wanna keep it a surprise. And then aside from that, something else I also did enjoy from this episode too. I did enjoy the fact that just the dueling was hilarious. Just seeing Ronze act overly dramatic like always. That's something I actually love. Because it shows you that the series is campy and the writers know that it's campy. But they still go full force in it. And that's something I really love when a series like this is self-aware of its campiness. And that's when it's at its funnest. At least in my opinion. And that's why I was a fan of what it did narratively. Now. And saying that. I actually like how the series is changing up the status quo. 
because in the Gohan Corporation actually seemingly accepting some bits about Rush Jules. I do like that. Because you know what they say. Sometimes if you can't go up against the flow, you might as well just go with the flow. Or you know how to say. If you can't beat them, join them. And that's something I really appreciate about this episode. And plus, it adds another one to Gokuto's resume. Because he has been taking some L's. And so, well, and some of the duels sometimes. So I also like this too. I think it makes the dueling resumes of the characters more balanced out. Now, aside from that though, I gotta say, something else I also really enjoyed about this episode too, aside from all that, I also enjoyed a bit of the power hungriness from, from Kaizo there. I'm like, because <laughs> even though I wasn't put on the narrative, it was still hilarious sequences regardless. And that's the type of cheesy stuff I love in this series. And that's why I thought the episodes were the even 8 out of 10. And the animation actually wasn't that bad. And I thought the vocal performances were absolutely amazing. But anyways, y'all. These are my thoughts on the episode. I would love to hear your thoughts on how I feel about my reaction or the episode itself in the comment section below. Hope y'all rate the bit, share it, comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all later if you come back for more. Because I'm definitely pumped up to react to the next episode. But anyways, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching my video and have a fantastic day, y'all. Bye-bye.